that's the lesson that I presented in class today. So if you were absent or you're an at-home learner, this is for you. So I talked about speed and velocity today. So speed and velocity. Speed and velocity are related, except they have a difference to them. Speed is what we consider a scalar quantity, while velocity is a vector. Before break, we learned what those two words were. Scalar quantity is something that doesn't have a direction, but a vector does. So just to add, we have no direction, or we have direction. So I have two examples, or two things here. I'm going to write 10 meters per second and 10 meters per second. So meters per second is your units for both velocity and speed. But in order to distinguish between the two, velocity needs to have a direction with it. So 10 meters per second is speed, but if I say 10 meters per second to the east, I'm actually talking about velocity. Speed and velocity have the same equation. It is distance over time. So speed is d over t, while velocity is also d over t, except I use an s for speed and a v for velocity. I'm going to go ahead and derive the equations from this. So if I want to solve for d, what I'll do is I need to multiply by t. So d equals v times t. But if I want to solve for t, I'm going to cross multiply and put t over here. And then divide by v. So t is d over v. So your three equations are v equals d over t, d equals v times t, and t equals d over v. So those are the three equations that we're going to use today. We're going to do a couple problems just so we can apply this formula and this knowledge. Whenever I do a problem, I'm going to set them up the same way. Problems are usually four points or five points, I'm sorry, problems are five points, and I'm going to show you how I set them up. I'm always going to start with what I'm given. And what I mean by that is what is in the equation itself, or what's in the problem. Physics problems are going to be word problems, so we have to pull out the information that we're given. The other thing that I need to include is the equation. What equation do I need in order to solve the problem? After that, I need to make sure that I show my work. How did I get my problem? So when we do this, I want you guys to do this on paper, and then you can send pictures of it to me, and we'll do things that way. The other two things are going to be the correct answer will be worth a point, and then the correct unit. So we're going to do five example problems. I want you to do these with me so you understand how to do this. So Benjamin watches the thunderstorm from his apartment window. He sees the flash of a lightning bolt and begins counting the seconds until he hears the clap of thunder 10 seconds later. There's my first given, 10 seconds. Well, 10 seconds is going to be what my T is. Assume that the speed of sound in air is 340 meters per second. How far away is the lightning bolt? I'm given another value, 340 meters per second. Well, meters per second is going to be velocity. What am I missing? I don't have D or distance. So I'll put that with a question mark. That's what I need to solve for. So since I'm solving for D, I look back at my three, equa um, three equations that I wrote. And I'm going to use D equals V times T. Work shown. D equals 340 meters per second times 10 seconds. I need to keep my units. This is because so I don't mess up what my correct units need to be. We're going to do correct units first. Meters per second times seconds. Well, the seconds are going to cancel out. 
So my units are going to be meters. If you work this problem out, you're actually going to end up with 3,400. This is not right. The reason for this is you have to have the right number of sig figs. So I need to go back to my problem here. So this has one, two, three, four, four sig figs, and this one has one, two, three, three sig figs. When I do multiplication or division, I'm going to do the least number of sig figs in the problem. So I need three. Well, right now I only have one, two. Well, let's add a decimal. Still doesn't work because now I have one, two, three, four, and I only need three. So this is the time that we need to use scientific notation. So I'm going to write 3.40 times 10 to the, and I need to see how, what do I need? One, two, three, three times, going to the left so it's positive. So my answer is going to be 300, sorry, 3.40 times 10 to the third meters. And when we do this, I always want you to circle your correct answer. So that's problem number one. Let's do another one. On May 29, 1988, Rick Mears won the Indianapolis 500 in three hours and 45 minutes. What was his average speed during the 500 mile race? Miles is generally not used. We're going to use meters, but in this case, we are going to use it. So we have 3.45 hours. That is going to be our time. We also have 500 miles. 500 miles is our distance, so we want to know how fast was he traveling. The equation that we need to use is V equals D over T, my work shown. So I'm going to plug it in, 500 miles over 3.45 hours. My units are going to be miles per hour, so nothing's going to cancel out here. How many sig figs do I need? I wrote this wrong. That actually is supposed to have a decimal there. Decimal. That's important. Decimals are important. So we have one, two, three, one, two, three. So my answer also needs to have three sig figs. So when I work that out, I have 145 miles per hour. Technically, this should just be an H. Sorry about that. So that's our second problem. Let's do another. The slowest animal ever discovered was a crab found in the Red Sea. It traveled with an average speed of 5.70 kilometers per, per year. How long would it take this crab to travel 100 kilometers? So I'm given 5.70 kilometers per year. So that's going to be my velocity. And I'm also given a distance, 100. I need to find what my time is. So if I look back on my equations, time is going to be, sorry, T equals D over V. I'm going to plug in my numbers. I have 100 kilometers over 5.70 kilometers per year. These are going to cancel out, so my units will be years. I have one, two, three, three sig figs. Mr. Shabaton, could you call me at extension 300, Ms. Shabaton? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. I have three sig figs here, and I have one, two, three, three sig figs here. I need to figure out how many sig figs do I my final answer, which will be three. So if I put this into my calculator, I actually get 17.5 years.
Next, Hans stands at the rim of the Grand Canyon and yodels down to the bottom. He hears his yodel echo back from the canyon floor 5.20 seconds later. So my first one is time, 5.20 seconds. Assume that his speed of sound and air is 340 meters per second. How deep is the canyon at this location? So I have a velocity, 340 meters per second, and I need to find my distance. So, oops, sorry, we messed this up in class, so I'm going to not mess it up this time. I'm going to explain why. So here's my canyon. Here's Hans. Here's his yodel. Travels down, travels back up, and it takes 5.20 seconds. That is not the correct time. We want to know D. We want to know this distance. What this time is going to tell us is going down and back. So in order to get the correct time, we have to divide it by 2. So 2.60 seconds. We'll have problems like this again later on as well. Since I'm solving for distance, my equation is going to be d equals vt. I'm going to plug in my numbers, 340 meters per second times 2.60 seconds. My seconds are going to cancel out. I need to make sure I have sig figs. So this has 4 and this has 3. So my answer needs to have three sig figs, since we always do the least number of sig figs. So once I do the math, my D is actually going to be 884, and my correct units are going to be meters. And I would circle my final answer. Next problem. A peregrine falcon is the world's fastest known bird and has been clocked diving downward toward its prey at a constant vertical velocity of 92 point, sorry, 97.2 meters per second. If the falcon dives straight down with a height of 100 meters, how much time does it give the rabbit below to consider its next move? So we have velocity. Velocity is 97.2 meters per second. We have a distance, which is 100 meters and we need to know time. So t is going to be distance over velocity. So I'm going to plug in my numbers 100 meters divided by 97.2 meters per second. I'm going to cancel out my units so my correct units are going to be seconds that are left over. I have three sig figs here, three sig figs here, so my answer should also have three sig figs. And when I put this in the calculator, I'm actually going to get 1.03 seconds. And that is my final answer. This last problem is kind of fun. It is now 10.29 a.m., but when the bell rings at 10.30 a.m., Suzette will be late for French class, for the third time this week. She must get from one side of the school to the other by hurrying down three different hallways. She runs down the first hallway a distance of 35 meters at a speed of 3.5 meters per second. Let's go ahead and write that down. So she's traveling in three hallways. So I have a three-part problem here. So the first hallway, second hallway, and third hallway. My first hallway is a distance of 35.0 meters at a speed of 3.50 meters per second. Let's look at our, the rest of the problem. The second hallway is filled with students and she covers it, its length of 48 meters at an average speed of 1.20 meters per second. So our second hallway is 48.0 meters but its velocity is 1.20 meters per second. The final hallway is empty and Suzette sprints at 60 meters at a speed of five meters per second. Distance is 60 meters. Velocity is 5.00 meters per second. Does Suzette make it to class on time or does she get detention for being late again? We're using the same equation each time. We're using T equals D over V. 
So let's solve for each one of these. She goes down. I'm sorry. I want you to solve these on your own and then see how you did. So hallway number one, she travels 35 meters at 3.5 meters per second. So the time it takes her to get down hallway number one is 10 seconds. Hallway number two, she goes 48 meters, but is going slowly. So it's going to be 40 seconds. So she has 50 seconds left. So we need to make sure she only had a minute. So this problem needs to be fewer than 10 seconds in order for her to not get a detention. So T equals 60 meters at 5 meters per second. And that is actually 12 seconds. So if we add these together, 10 seconds, 40 seconds, oh, sorry, and 62 seconds, uh, 12 seconds, she actually gets 62 seconds, which means she is late and she gets a detention. I am going to have a homework assignment that's posted tomorrow that will have a couple problems. I don't know how many yet exactly. Uh, some problems to practice doing speed and velocity problems. And that will be posted tomorrow. And that will be your assignment tomorrow. If you have any questions on this, please let me know. It's a pretty simple concept. We only have a few different variables. We will do acceleration next. And acceleration is a little more complicated, but it's not that bad either. And we'll also talk about free fall as well. And free fall is similar to velocity. It just has a gravitational component with it. Again, if you have any questions, please let me know. Have a wonderful day. Bye.